Hi, I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. And you are the Enchanters now. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted us to do the Zodiac series. So we're doing a Zodiac series. But we promised you a twist to the series. So each month we're going to be adding two random attributes. One will be drawn by me and one will be drawn by Barb. This time we are doing the Aries doll, for which the stone is the bloodstone. Red and green. So that's the colors we want to do. And for the two random attributes we came up with a list of things to which we invite you to add to by writing a comment. This time we're going to be doing a traditional draw, but in the future we'll try to mix it up. So if you want to know what silly idea we come up with next, you might want to subscribe. Now, let's get to drawing the things from the spaceship. From a spaceship. Almost. Now. <laughs> The first thing is cyberpunk. Yay! Are we excited? Yes. Okay. Cyberpunk is always exciting. I will. Whoa! That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> More crazy next in the next episode. Okay. And the second thing is short hair. Okay. I think that works. If you want to add more random things. Suggest in things in the comments and we'll add them to, to the bowl. We will add them to the bowl of ideas. It might be a metaphorical bowl because <laughs> True. next time we might be, I don't know, shooting darts or something. So let's you go. You know what to do. <laughs> this is actually what to do. Leave okay. a comment. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, but also, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. For our cyberpunk short hair Aries, we're going to use the head of Rochelle Quill and body of Laguna Blue. This body has left after we changed our concept for Liberty. She was supposed to have a cage belly, but instead she got a big wooden cage. I have an idea for how we can use this body to make a cyborg doll. I'm going to tell you a few details about designing this character while preparing Rochelle's head for customization. Punk is a rebel, and I felt a little rebellious when designing this character. Ares is portrayed as a ram, and the first image in my brain is a white sheep. That's why we're going to do a black sheep. Usually cyberpunk aesthetics are very white or Asian, and the hairstyles are short and straight and angular, but my rebellious side told me to do something different, so we're doing a head full of curls. So she's going to be a black cyborg doll inspired by Ares, and I think Rochelle will be a good base for her. After cleaning the head from the factory paint and original hair, I can start with modifications. Here you can see me adding a wire armature for the animal ears, but later I also opened her head and filled it with hot glue, so it's hard and the clay will stick to the vinyl better. I'm sculpting it in two stages, first the base layer and after it's cured I add another one, smoother and with more details. Then it's time to add some robotic parts to the design. I know I want a black neck to imitate these cool full color neck tattoos. It definitely suits a futuristic aesthetic. By full color I mean full black color, no like colorful tattoos. <laughs> Off camera I cut a hole inside her chest so we have even more levels of the surface. And this is how it looks after working on it a little bit more. As I said, she's going to be a black sheep, but I actually don't want her to be pure black, but grey. It's going to give a more robot-like vibe, and also she will look better in photos. The face was… Um, a journey. I started with two coats of chalk pastels and Mr. Super Clear Sealant for the base color, and I am now drawing basic eye shapes with watercolor pencils and acrylic paints. It's my first time trying Derwent Inkton's black and white pencils, and I have to say I love them. Hashtag not sponsored. But white on a dark skin color would take forever to build a good opacity. That's why I'm moving to acrylic paints pretty quickly. I did simple triangular brows and started to think about robotic features. I don't know what happened to me because I had a perfectly fine concept art and for some reason I decided to invent this part from scratch. And of course, I didn't like it. So I started from the beginning and this is my new base layer. And guess what? It's taken straight from my concept art. Wow, surprise! Concept sketches work! 
I'm slowly working on every detail of the cyborg aesthetic and I'm very happy with how this part turned out. Now I'm adding some makeup that I also drew on my concept sketch. I guess I learned from my mistakes. She looks really nice with only grey and white, but I want some color so she doesn't look like an android. I still want to have some organic features. So following my design, I'm giving her horizontal pupils, like real sheep have. I'm adding more watercolor pencils and acrylic paints to achieve more depth in the irises and to add details like waterline. And looking at this face now, I have to say I really really like it. But something went wrong with my brain and I started to see her as creepy and decided to switch to round pupils and this was a big mistake. Do you know that feeling when you're starting to spiral into something? Like I sometimes do it with erasing things. I wanted to erase the irises I made and I, I can say it was successful. And then I thought, no, everything has to go. Yeah, so everything stays except the eyes. This time I did a black sclera and chose a mint color for the irises. Then I moved to making lashes to rest a bit from staring at her pupils. I'm going for a very simple style of lashes, everything else is detailed and I don't want to make her face too busy. Then it's time for a bit of catch lights and the face is finally ready. The footage doesn't show all the struggle, but I spent too much time on her face. But I really, really like the final result. Let's move on to painting her chest. Like I said before, I want the neck to be black and I also added two black blobs to cover her chest. Cyberpunk is always so funny to me. You can alter your body to be harder, better, faster or stronger, but all the girls always have big titties hilarious sometimes. Anyway, let's fill the hole in her chest with a piece of iridescent vinyl. I chose the orange side and glue it from the inside with Yuhu glue. Yuhu, Yuhu, Uhu, Uhu glue. Hi, Barb here, Alex also here. This video is not sponsored, but it could be by you. If you would like to join our Patreon, we have made one. We are planning to do some live streams there, so if you want to hang out with us live and chat about the projects that we are making, the projects that we've made, maybe you have some other questions, maybe you want to know how many hairs does Alex have in her nose, maybe we will do a live stream where we count nose hair. We're gonna hang out and it's gonna be fun. So if you would like to be a part of that, um, there's gonna be a link in the description down below. And if you like any of our Zodiac dolls, you might want to be a Patreon at the end of the series because we will be giving them away. So see you on Patreon, I hope. See you, love you, bye! The top part of the body is almost done and there's still a lot of work to do on the bottom part. I'm cutting the cuffs with a Dremel tool and bend the plastic to imitate animal legs. I know I'm going to add a lot of clay and fur, so I want my base to be slimmer, so the result is not bulky. Here's the difference before and after the treatment. Now it's also a good time to add hooves or rather hooves inspired shapes, uh, blobs of clay. I sculpted some mechanical parts at the back of the legs and when everything is dry and cured I can start painting. I chose orange for the hooves and black for the body. I didn't plan this but I added a brown gradient on the bottom part. I did it because I have a perfect color of walking that was left after making a fawn unicorn raphelia millions of years ago. Look at these stylish poofy boots. The first layer of glue and flock is always patchy and not satisfying at all, so I'm applying a second layer. This one took more time to set and after it dried, I removed all the loose fiber. I want a fade and this doesn't look like a fade, so I'm adding two layers of black and brown pastels and setting them with MSC. To make the upper part fluffy, I'm gluing brushed black yarn fibers. I think it's my first time trying to make fluffy legs with long fur. Raphelia was a horse fawn, so she had very short hair on her legs and it was definitely easier and faster to make. This one is not perfect, but I like the result. Time for a signature part of a ram, the horns. I tried to make them from the same sculpt as a spine, but this doesn't actually make sense because I didn't show you the spine. Never mind, you will see the spine soon. <laughs> Spoiler! 
Um, yeah, but every try failed and honestly I was kind of running out of time. So we 3D printed part of this model. To match the hooves I painted them yellow and orange. And to tone it down I'm adding black pastel and paint. But before I can glue them to the head I need some curly hair. Since I am the obvious curly hair expert in this house, I will prepare the wefts for this doll. Haven't done that in a really long time. We had these wefts brushed out already, so I just need to first straighten them and then cut them into small sections and curl them. I wanted to do a time lapse for the whole process, but it took such a long time that I got bored like five times in the middle. So I only recorded at the beginning. And then the other part I did while talking to some friends on Discord, so I didn't record that. This is how much curls I ended up with. Since there were some orange wefts left over from something, was it Namiko? I decided to make a couple of ginger strands as an accent. Here's how I did all of the curls. Wrap them around a metal stick and press with a flat iron. Pretty simple, just really time consuming. I couldn't decide if I want the orange accent on the bottom or on the top of the head, but I think the bottom will be a better option this time. It's going to lighten up the jawline and visually separate the head from the body. The head was cut into two pieces and glued back together with hot glue and usually no other glue wants to stick to it, so I'm using hot glue to attach the wefts. It's always a little bit messy and the strings are annoying, but I carefully remove them all later. When I have more than a half of head done, it's time to attach the horns. I placed little pins inside her head and glued the horns to them, but I didn't like the proportions and curve of the horns. So I cut the horns, glued them to the pins in a different way and filled the gap with hot glue. But no worries, epoxy clay goes on top to straighten the structure. I don't want to mimic the texture of 3D prints, I want to transform the situation into a nice looking feature. I'm painting the clay to match the color of her skin and gluing the silver thing I saved from something. I added matching paintings and the horn problem is fixed. Then I continue to glue hair. I added a few loose strands hanging on the forehead and now I'm gluing the parting weft that I prepared off camera. And this is how the hair turned out. Absolutely adorable. I love it. So we still have a big gap between the parts and I want to connect them with a robotic spine. We already have a cyborg cow Tsula with mechanical legs and cyberpunk fighter Coco with big mecha gauntlets. So I thought a spine would be something new, something fresh. I sculpted it in Blender and bar printed it on our Saturn II printer in grey resin. I'm filling the bottom part with hot glue and attaching the spine. I wanted to create a nice curve with the legs, just as normal Monster High dolls are. When the glue is dry, I can add epoxy clay. I thought I could add some simple details and I chose wire. At first I went for big loops, but I decided to tone it down and now I have two small ones at the front and one bigger at the back. Painting this was very simple, just the same colors as I used on her chest, so black, mint and grey. To be honest, half of the details on the sculpt are not visible in this scale. <laughs> Nowadays we usually print for smart dolls, so I think I confused the scale a little bit. Never mind, I'm filling the hole with aluminum foil so the spine can touch something. And it was all good until I added more glue. No, It's not even that the glue doesn't hold, this is broken! I don't know if it happened because of the heat or what, but I reattached it with hot glue and because I don't want to cover the spine more than necessary, I'm making the connection stronger with UV resin. It also adds a shine to it. At the back I added clay for more secure transition. At first I thought I'd be making an orange leather like jacket for this gal, but it has evolved to a black iridescent snakeskin bolero. Don't ask me how the transition happened, because I don't know. I'm using a pattern which I will link below. The construction is pretty straightforward. I hemmed the cuffs using glue instead of pins, and I added gathering stitches to the sleeves. I attached the cuffs to the sleeves, and then the sleeves to the armholes. 
I like to do this by sewing from the bodice side and not from the sleeve side. I always not tell you this, but that's the way to do it. Next is sewing the side seams and having some doubts. Nie wygląda to zbyt epicko na razie. And then having the whole thing all around. I am a changed woman. <laughs> Willingly hand sewing these days, huh? Still not the best at it, but I am trying, okay? Hey, that took all of seven minutes, so maybe it wasn't too bad. It looks like a <laughs> space croissant. <laughs> This is how she turned out. We are really excited for this random challenge series and hope you guys are too. Make sure to leave your suggestions for both new attributes and your most ridiculous ways of randomizing them in the comments down below. As mentioned before, we are going to be giving these dolls away to our Patreons at the end of this series, but if you'd like to become our Patron in the meantime, we would love to have you. What is your zodiac sign? Maybe you're an Aries? Let us know in the comments down below. No worries, we plan to do all of them, so just wait. For your sign and I am Aquarius and Barb is a Capricorn. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Visit Patreon for extra content. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye! have the stuff overlapping so yeah.